In this lecture, we will discuss the price elasticity of demand. As per law of demand, a fall in the price of a good raises its quantity demanded, keeping other factors constant. Note that this tells us only the direction of change, not the size of the change. We still don't know by how much the quantity demanded rises when the price of a good falls. This is where price elasticity of demand comes in. The price elasticity of demand measures how much the quantity demanded responds to a change in price. We call the demand for a good to be elastic if the quantity demanded responds substantially to changes in the price and inelastic if the quantity demanded responds only slightly to changes in the price. But what determines the price elasticity of demand? How can we know how will the consumers respond to an increase in price of, say, oranges? If we know the demand curve for oranges, then we can use mathematical formulas to get a specific value for price elasticity of demand. But it is not always feasible to have knowledge of demand curve. So it is helpful to have some general rules of thumb about what influences price elasticity of demand. The first factor is availability of closed substitutes. If a good has more closed substitutes available, then it is easier for consumers to switch from that good to other goods if the price of good rises. These type of goods tend to have more elastic demand as compared to goods with less or no substitutes available. For example, tea and coffee can be easily substituted for each other. So even a small increase in the price of tea, assuming the price of coffee is constant, will cause the quantity of tea sold to fall by a large amount. On the other hand, the demand for eggs is likely to be less elastic as compared to demand for tea, as there is no close substitute available for eggs in the market. The second factor is nature of good. Goods that are considered necessities have less elastic demand as compared to the goods that are considered as luxuries. It is because it is difficult to give up consumption of a necessary good by a large amount when its price goes high. For example, salt. On the other hand, if the good is a luxury, then an individual has more flexibility to change his purchasing habits in response to a price change. The proportion of income that a consumer spends on a good also influences the price elasticity of demand. If a consumer spends a very small portion of his income on a good, then he will pay little attention to its price. For example, if you pick up a pack of mints once in a while, you might not notice an increase in price from 30 cents to 40 cents. Yet this is a 33% increase in the price. So in such cases, the demand is likely to be less elastic. The fourth factor is time period. Demand for a good is more elastic over longer time periods. This is because in the long run, a consumer can change his consumption habits more conveniently than in the short run. For example, if price of gasoline rises, you won't be able to reduce your consumption of gasoline by a large amount immediately. But over the years, you may reduce your demand substantially as you may buy a new fuel-efficient car or switch to public transportation or you may also move closer to where you work. It is important to note that these rules are written in terms of relative elasticity and inelasticity. So if we are given two goods and say both have elastic demand, then we can use these rules to determine which good is more elastic and which good is less elastic. These rules do not tell us whether a good is elastic or inelastic in an absolute sense. Now the question is how to compute price elasticity of demand in absolute sense. There are mainly two methods of measurement of price elasticity of demand. Percentage change method and geometric method. In addition to these two methods, I will also explain you the relationship between price elasticity of demand and total revenue, which can also be used to estimate price elasticity. 
and we will also cover the midpoint method which is just a slight variation of percentage change method.